Yeah. Hi guys. Today we are going to look at overview or introduction of time series analysis. Subsequently, we can discuss about all other uh, uh, topics, quant qualitative judgment and uh, qualitative uh, judgment uh, and qualitative analysis. How we can take decision based on qualitative method. That kind of thing we will discuss. As we discussed in the previous class, time series forecasting. The moment you see forecasting, it is meant for prediction, prediction, predicting. <coughs> Normally, the meaning forecasting is something predicting, something uh, uh, predicting about future what will happen. Forecasting, weather forecasting. They used to say weather forecasting also. So they are predicting what will happen tomorrow, the rainfall or temperature or uh, the moisture level or humid level, whatever. Time series analysis, the moment you see this kind of word, it is of exploration. We can say equivalent to EDA in the conventional data. It is for descriptive modeling, understanding the data. First, you need to understand what is time series, <coughs> how it need to be analyzed. If you look at in the conventional data, you will look, you will have collection or many independent variable one response variable or dependent variable. This is what you can see. When it comes time series, definitely one of the time series component is available. For example, share market value. Share This I have used for some other share value of SRM I have mentioned. So share value of uh, TCS, share value of Infosys. You can take anything, Axis Bank, Federal Bank or anything. <coughs> 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, then 4 o'clock. What is what is the share value? Because this is almost closing time. You need to take decision whether you want to purchase a share or not. So that situation, time series analysis will be helpful. So if you look at the National Stock Exchange of India Limited, Nifty, NSC Nifty, Sensex, these all those concepts fully revolves around with uh, time series analysis. There are many more we will be looking at shortly. So in time series, time act as an independent variable to estimate dependent variable. <coughs> this is what the ultimate definition for time series. Any one of your variable constituted in the independent uh, variable set becomes time series data. What is time series? This time stamps. Either time or day, week, month. For, a, a, for example, weekly sale, monthly sale you want to predict. January, what is the number of uh, product sold out or what is the profit? Anything, other variable can be anything. Time, then you will be associating with other variable. You want to showcase your sale or loss or profit, something will be associated with the time. So that time, January month, how many shampoo packets sold out? February month, how many shampoo packets sold out? So you have the historical data from which it is possible to predict what would be the um, expected pieces of shampoo bottles will be, will be expected to sell in the month of January 2021. So you can have a fair idea. Accordingly, you can fill the inventory. You can fill your stock so that out of stock word no need to say. So in this situation, <coughs> time series data you will be using. So in, uh, remember any one of your independent variable happens to become time series data. So next, what is time series? It's a collection of observation made sequentially in time. It could be day wise. If you look at a uh, blog, whenever you are running blog, if you wish, I can show my dashboard. So whenever you are running a blog in your dashboard, it gives the number of views happened throughout 24 hours. Day wise also it gives the weekly, monthly, all time. All time means uh, the entire the day which I uh, the day which I started that blog and till date it will show the overall uh, trend line of the blog views so that timestamp is attached <coughs> collection of observation 
so it will give the count the number of us uh, visited the blog time series analysis is a statistical technique that deals with the time series data it is also called trend analysis so trend what are all the possible trends are available shortly we are going to see that data in a series of particular time periods or intervals that's all either it can be weekly basis day basis hour basis or monthly basis or yearly basis um, if you are running a biggest industry you don't look at uh, daily basis and all monthly basis if not yearly basis so all those reports or analysis or uh, uh, forecasting or uh, taking decision or planning for the future decision is upon the past then future is for suggestions or recommendation prescription so everywhere you are dependent on <coughs> time series or certain interval now if you look into data it is of four type one is time series data this you know very well it is the moment it is included any one of the time interval or time stamp time series data then it is time series data sale count or profit over the period these all uh, fit into time series data cross sectional data study of the population econometrics so you can uh, uh, understand about individuals firms countries regional level that is cross sectional data next to pooled data it is a combination of time series data and cross sectional data if you are stepping into machine learning world this is what most of the time challenging or you are expected to work on pooled data combination of time series and cross sectional data then panel data is a time based data set so this is also more or less time based data set so these are all majorly four types of data people used to address about these are not into your syllabus however it is required for your understanding to take it to for better clarity so next where and all time series data financial time series scientific time series demographic time series so you can analyze state wise progress yearly every year how the state is progressing country gdp how the country is represented meteorological data time series data production of goods and services per capita income index of industrial production every industry has several it is available in your uh, syllabus itself so it, these are all those things possible with the time series analysis economic forecasting sales forecasting budgetary analysis stock market analysis <coughs> yield projections process and quality control these all those situation time series analysis will be helpful or useful when you look at this one of the example climate change over the last millennium this is one of the time series analysis if you look at this all the climate data based on this pattern or based on the year 1000 years ago 2000 people are naming it as medieval period these are all little iron age ice age these are all those name they are keeping in this what is interesting thing you need to understand is whenever they have given the cut off if you look at here this is a boundary below this boundary whatever comes into the picture they are telling it as ice era ice age whatever goes up they are telling that hot age hot or uh, uh, what to say um yeah hot hot period look at roman warm period warm age warm age this is cold age cool period look at this blue why now we are into global warming how they are telling this look at here this curve started going up this green color if you notice here there is a green small green only that is why now people are calling we are in the global warming situation problem we are in the global warming problem because from the cold age now after 2000 not even 2000 before uh, 90s itself 90s it started moving towards modern era moving towards <coughs> warm warm period that is why people are afraid of global warming or carbon emission greenhouse effect all those topics they are coming and discussing 
that's all. So based on this, it is discussed Roman warm period, dark ages, cool period, medieval warm period, little ice age. So these are all the analysis carried out with the support of time series analysis. How they are concluding? This is you. It is this picture is not of uh, uh, very much easy to display. Voluminous of the of data. Maybe look at here how many centuries, not decades, how many centuries of data they are analyzing and coming out with this conclusion, and they are representing through visual. So that is what time series analysis. Now. First step, you may need to understand this concept because in the textbook, this visualization has not given. It is articulated full of verbal. That is the reason I have brought this picture, especially for this picture only. I'm walking through this document. If you look at the time series data, it has four major component. One is irregular fluctuation. Look at here, this peak up and down goes. Cyclic, if you look at this cycle repeats again. There is a peak, there is a valley, ups and down it comes. Then trend. What is the trend? Look at here. The cycle is going towards upward direction. It goes. If I continue, maybe much more it comes like this. So this trend is this seasonal. What is this seasonal? Look at here. What maybe this is night time. Maybe this is daytime seasonal. Night time it may be low, day time it may be high, maybe the business or it may be your YouTube view count or it may be your blog count or it may be your customer visit to your website, anything it can be. These are all the four components you need to be thorough on. This is regular fluctuations. This is called seasonal. Next is cyclical trend, upward trend, downward trend, linear trend, non-linear trend, there are several trends uh, which will exist. <coughs> long term movement. So this is what long term movement. So it can be downward or upward, linear or non-linear. Next, periodic movement or short term fluctuation. So this is a, another phenomena you need to be thorough. Cyclic variation. So how the cyclic is varying ups and down, how it varies. The next is random or irregular variation. So there is a sudden spike and it goes normal movement goes. Uh, what happened one of uh, maybe five years ago nowadays I stopped writing blog. There is uh, no time past four years. I'm stopped 2009. I started all of a sudden one day one fine day exactly six or seven years ago. I mean to say from Israel. Thousand two thousand count had come. My blog normally every day, however, uh, I'm writing article or not uh, writing article. If the visit would become 200 to 300 views, that itself I need to promote in my Facebook and uh, I need to inform to my friends. Those things I need to do only then it was possible. All of a sudden, 2000, 3000 count had come within one to two hours from Israel. I don't know. Still that it is mystery for me. Suddenly that much count uh, views had come to my blog. Never that happened. 2000 count I mean to say. It was at the max 300. Worst case 100. This is what uh, um, the views used to be to my blog after one year or two years only. Earlier it was 5 count, 7 count, 20 count, 30 count, that's all. So that is called random. This sudden peak random or irregular variation. <coughs> All of a sudden, some miracle will happen. Yeah, similarly, down also it is possible. So imagine you are a famous or popular YouTuber. You may attract more than one lakh views. All of a sudden, it may go down. That's all. This is stationary movement. See, the, although there is a lot of fluctuations or variations or um, things are available, this table more or less your business trend is of this. This is non stationary. Look at maybe for five first five months slowly it is decreasing. All of a sudden there is a uh, larger amount of decreasing in this trend. So these are all the words are understanding record visually so that 
these kind of words when you look at into your textbook you can able to pick up quickly now there are several models available for the time series analysis and taking decision making or prediction there are three techniques discussed with respect to your syllabus moving average method exponential smoothing then here also two types two types of exponential smoothing regression analysis or trend uh, trend line analysis trend line analysis or regression analysis both are same interchangeably you can use uh, these two words uh, never i heard outside in your textbook author is mean to say trend line or mm -hmm. regression analysis in the interchangeable manner with that let us move on to your uh, uh, topic of discussion with the <coughs> textbook sorry one minute this screen could you see um uh ivan james textbook yes ma'am okay <clears throat> forecasting technique so how you can forecast qualitative forecast or judgmental method so what is the way you can do qualitative is just taking the experience when the historical data is not available you may need to take decision so how you will be taking decision there are several scenarios available so first you will understand from the past trend or you will uh, take people opinion <clears throat> these are the two ways you can go and take decision uh, based on qualitative method so next another use of judgmental method incorporating non quantitative information you may need to incorporate several other facet which are all impact of government regulations or competitor behavior quantitative forecast competitive behavior quantitatively you may analyze if the data is not available what you can do you may read article suppose you are a amazon guy you may read a article on alibaba or you may read article on um, what to say flipkart or jio e-commerce business uh, vendors you can read so what that article says how they are promoting suppose new year sale is very big hit happened with flipkart i am amazon guy i need to read and understand and qualitatively i need to take decision qualitatively i need to analyze what is the marketing strategy or what is the way they are promoting their business how they are attracting the customer what are all the Uh, discounts or other attractive prices they are giving is there any new product into their business that kind of qualitative decisions i need to take here quantitative may be useful but this situation reading a newspaper article and taking decision about my business with respect to competitors business need to be mostly it is qualitative <coughs> next another method is one is you can go for taking opinion manager's opinion or group based jury executive opinion more structured approach if you use that is called delphi method what is more structured approach one is judgmental qualitative and judgmental technique that's all what is qualitative you can write anything most of our life decisions and judgments are happening in every bit of our activity morning itself you will be taking decision today you need to attend ba class or not decision every minute yeah that ba hour comes should i log in or not yes logged in should i attend or not yes attended should i ask question or not yes it will be decision making process every time this all come into qualitative you don't apply any statistics or probability you don't uh, understand the past issue happen and and the future when the exam comes people will be thinking i would have studied better when the exam goes nobody bothers let the exam come then i can see so that is what you all are doing so it's a kind of qualitative no statistical tool you are applying what the same decision making qual although it is qualitative or taking opinion from <coughs> the expert systematically if you are doing that is delphi method <coughs> what is the meaning systematic they mean to say is they will have group of experts 5 to 10 experts they will pose the scenario or context of the problem 
they don't interact with all experts together at a stretch one on one they will take opinion from first expert second expert third fourth fifth and 10th or 100 judges who are three also i will be recording everybody's uh, opinion on a paper or document then i need to pass on the opinion of everyone to all others then why this guy is giving this opinion why that guy is giving another opinion what the perception they have how they had given this opinion those all brainstorming will happen next then from the second level of brainstorming they will be taking judgment or decision at the last level this is called delphi method nothing more next uh, predicting the price of oil if you look at this if you read the story ups and down of that uh, what to say uh, oil price every duration happened the reason is surplus of oil the reason is increase of vehicles there are different reasons comes together so by understanding certain things we are, we, are, we may not able to take decision based on our own data it is dependent on somebody's data if there is uh, three more country all of a sudden recently i heard the news that turkey started having numerous tons of gold they started mining casually gold pieces has come so now they are going for planning gold mine that that is how oil mining may happen all of a sudden miraculous then oil price naturally will go down suppose alternate fuel comes now the oil price can be predicted for after 5 years or 10 years now people are going towards green energy alternative energy are they are going for electric vehicle now what would be the price of the oil these are all not possible to analyze through data this all trend the how the trend is going how the government policies are coming nowadays funds are released by all the government bodies whom are attempting with green computing alternative energy so electric vehicle autonomous vehicle these are all the kind of stuff encouraged by all the funding agency so i am reading the article i am understanding having conversation with my colleagues or my experts based on these all owner i need to take decision what would happen after 5 years 10 years should i be into the business or not what is the rate i need to fix if something goes wrong or collapses should i close this oil mining business all those stuff i need to take decision this is not possible through data analysis here where in which the qualitative judgmental method comes into the picture that's all so next delphi method it is a uh, one paragraph only if you read what is the story i said the same story only available in the next round experts revise their estimate and the process repeated usually for no more than two or three rounds so these are all given here you can go through next indicators and indices there are several indicators indices available in the industrial sector gross domestic product gdp that indicates the growth of economy in a nation so that these are all the kind of index and indices uh, indicators index and indicators we may need to consider while uh, taking decisions for example here one scenario is given dow jones industrial average <clears throat> this one of the index dow jones industrial average i don't know this, this is what uh, a kind of uh, index name given general stock market performance indexes do not provide a complete forecast rather it give a better picture of direction of change and the, the, it will give some indication if i say gdp 200 gdp 2000 that gives you clearly whether gdp is in the better position or not no if you don't even understand what exactly all other micro level details associated attached with gdp at least knowing that value you will be getting a fair idea so that is what index and indicators plays a role leading economic indicators average weekly hours manufacturing average weekly initial clients unemployment insurance 
new orders customer goods and materials these are all some of the index values index is decided based on these are all the components some kind of uh, analogy has been discussed now statistical forecasting models we are stepping into this look at here what is stationary there is no major change across the year imagine you started running a e-commerce business recently or uh, 2020 you started let us imagine throughout the year there is a constant number of customers buying every day also your customers visit to your e-commerce website not more than 100 not less than 50 this is the band always people are coming and purchasing that is a stationary already i shown there how the stationary time series will look <clears throat> Next, what is the trend? Trend may be either upward or downward, I said already, over the period of time. For example, you started running the e-commerce business. Let us take, for example, the same scenario. January month, very first month you introduced. So sir, customers would be 50 to 100. Next month, if they are satisfied, naturally it would go to 100 to 150 or 200. Third month, if you are going for uh, social media advertisement, maybe 400 to 500. So the trend is towards upward. Next, just, just again some figures. Cyclic effect, already we have seen cyclic effect is ups and down. Now time series is represented. This is steadily growing upward direction. The trend is upward. Seasonal effect in the natural gas usage. Seasonal effect. When it is winter season, the usage is more. Summer season, it is less. Something like that, seasonal effect. It, it starts affecting. The seasons are affecting on the gas usage. So that can be depicted with time series analysis. Cyclic effects in federal funds rate. This is related to absolutely stock market or economical concept or a section. So here, lot of fluctuation. So this is cyclic effect. So it repeats uh, cyclic effect, ups and down, ups and down, repeats. How frequent, how rare, that is not a matter, but the pattern, if you look at, it repeats with ups and down. <clears throat> this is called cyclic effect. So there are three methods, popular method, moving average method, exponential smoothing method, regression analysis. Already I said that exponential smoothing, again, two different categories you have. Regression analysis otherwise can be said as trend analysis. Next, <clears throat> forecasting models for stationary time series. There is no drastic change or there is no trend in your uh, plot. Either upward trend, your business every month should either go in the upward direction. At least incremental number of increase in customers or the business should come in the downward direction. Without these all, then it is termed as stationary. When the business is off or the data is off stationary, that is where visual plot helps. So you need to understand whether uh, your data belongs to stationary or non-stationary. The primary understanding of time series analysis is first, most is you need to understand whether it is stationary time series or non-stationary it is first to understand please remember based on that uh, type only time series type only you can choose the model if it is stationary then you can go for moving average method that is where you need to understand simple moving average method if you read uh, very fundamental steps only given here what is simple moving average let us consider here Look at here, you are having past 17 weeks of uh, record, something, Excel file, has, uh, nothing to record to you. The units sold for the past 17 weeks. Imagine you are selling a car or you are selling a product which is homemade product. 17 weeks you have the information or e-commerce business also, whatever. So what you want to predict week 18 week 18 how you can predict it is based on the k value what is the k value is 
what is the prior information or the past historical data, how much you want to consider in the future prediction. That is what K. If it is too large also, uh, different effect. If it is too lesser also, different effect. Yeah, luckily it is available here. Look at here. When the K is larger, extreme values have less effect on the forecast. Extreme values, see for like uh, Israel, all of a sudden 2000, 3000 visitors have come to my blog. So that extreme values will not have any effect. So if you want to nullify that extreme values, you need to fix K value to become larger. Next, the smaller the value of K, quicker the forecast responds to the changes in the time series. So these two are the <coughs> understanding you should have when k is too larger what is the benefit when k is too minimal what is the benefit if i choose k is equal to 3 out of 17 weeks data age 2 71 50 divided by 3 this is what moving average very simple uh, childhood calculation only nothing to worry about this even excel is not required so look at here um next moving average week 1 to 17 given these are all the units sold 18th month you need to predate so forecast for week 4 you are taking average of b4 to b5 b4 to b5 you are taking sorry b6 b4 to b6 look at 3 3 k equal to 3 3 they are considering one minute i need Oh my God, Microsoft Edge I would have opened. I can mark and see. See, this is what they are considering. B4 to B6. They are fixing K equal to 3. Similarly, every other week, because K is equal to 3, because of that, it is not possible to predict here. First three weeks, you can't predict it. Because you have set K equal to 3. Prior, this is the very first data. How you can predict here based on the previous data? There is no other data. So that the moving average starts at 7 and goes up to 18th week. That's fine. Now this trend you can plot. Look at here. First three weeks you don't have. Fourth week itself you have. This moving average is red colored. The original data is of blue color. This is how moving average forecast helps. So this all Excel. So look at here moving average of this data. Now K is equal to 2 if you fix what will happen. First 2, 3 will become not applicable. Rest it will be possible to calculate. Units sold. So 18th month the prediction is 64.76 units sold. Now itself your thought process should spark. Immediately we are this is what actual happened this is what predicted then there are a lot of gap look at here 56 units only sold out but what is this moving average is predicting 64 deviation error 70 53 too, too much discrepancy look at here actually sold out to pieces into my shop is 70 the algorithm says 53 Look at here, 91, 62, 54, 70, everywhere, lot of discrepancy only. I could see 50, 73. Error is low, huge. The moment you study this immediately, this all nothing to worry. Excel minor, I don't have that software. We have we no need to worry of those all. Understand the concept, that's all. Now, look at here, immediately we have come. Just now I said, by understanding the plot itself, it is possible to take conclusion immediately we need to go for error validation error calculation deviation measure something like that that's it all of us we are familiar what are all the way we can understand or calculate the deviation in absolute percentage error first we need to understand what are all each kind of error measure and what is the pros and cons of using such measures which is the best that's it what is mean absolute deviation 
actual and predicted. Absolute value are predicted minus actual. Anything you can do. Absurd, predicted. Divided by n. <clears throat> mean absolute deviation. So why we are taking absolute? In order to find out the cancellation of the signs. So this is MAD. The next is, if you look at here, is a robust measure of error and is less affected by extreme observation. This is the benefit. So it provides a robust, it is uh, reliable. We can trust on this kind of error validation or measures. So very, uh, what is a major advantage is less affected by extreme observations. That's all. Mean squared error. Actual minus absurd squared. So definitely you will not be having that uh, sign cancellation. Square divided by n. RMS root mean square same, but you need to find out square root. The obtained value of MSC, you need to find out the squared value. Next. Here, what is the advantage is same units as the data. Data is given in dollar, original data, price something. Then the prediction also you need to understand in terms of dollar. Similar to the difference between standard deviation and variance. If you look at here, here it is not possible to understand through your units. It is very difficult. Whereas in the mean squared error and root mean squared error, you can represent the same unit. If it is gallon, if it is a rupee, if it is dollar, these all called units. The same units it is reflected in the error also in order to understand. Now what is fourth commonly used <coughs> method is mean absolute percentage error. What is a small difference is look at the normally actual minus uh, predicted we will be taking absolute that all. Immediately you need to divide by actual divided by n into 100. This is mean absolute percentage error. There are several uh, loss function measure methodology available, especially regression analysis. 5 to 6 or 7, even I addressed in one of the workshop, I have that Excel also. So the comparative study you should have when to use, when not to use, which one is reliable, which one is not reliable. That little understanding is required among several uh, loss function calculation. This is what mean absolute percentage error. MAD, MSC depend on the measurement scale of the time series data. These two are highly related. Your units, if the value, see 2000 I'm representing, 2000 can be a rupee or can be a US dollar or it can be somebody, some other country currency, something like that. The 2000, whatever you are representing, that is possible during the loss function also, can be inherited. That unit representation can be reflected in the loss function as well. So with that, this topic we are concluding. Look at here, one small sample data they have considered, the same 17 week unit sold. Then what is the forecasting they have predicted? Very fabulous calculation sheet they have put forth here. Absolute deviation, squared error, absolute percentage error, when k is equal to 2, when k is equal to 3, when k is equal to 4. So which is giving the lower, that only you may need to consider. <coughs> Look at here, compared to 13, 14, 16, 254, 299, 355, <coughs> 23, 28. This is what the comparative study of different values of k. Then you need to take decision out of this all. Which is more reliable or which is more robust? Relating all the three types of loss functions, you need to take decision. All the three loss functions you are calculating, then you can compare and you can take decision. Here look at all are increasing. <coughs> when K is increased, MAD, MSC, MAP, 
all the three are increasing, steadily increasing. Look at here. Then there is no um, vacancy. There is no improvement. If it is reducing, then there is a way to uh, understand or way, way to rely on the forecasting result predict. Then it can be the predicted value for 18th month is 60.50, 60.5. I should not trust 100%. I can take it as a index or thumb rule or indicator. That's all. So with that, today let me conclude. Tomorrow we will be looking at the first method and the second method of exponential smoothing model. Mm -hmm.